So one of the most important things that we've been able to do with satellite measurements from space uh, is to uh, measure the rate of sea level rise and, uh, and in fact the contribution from the polar ice sheets which is an important uh, element of the global sea level budget. And we've been able to do that with a whole range of different satellite measurements now. Over the past 20 years there have been a large number of estimates of how much ice has been lost uh, from Greenland and Antarctica using satellite data and that's because First of all, it's a really important topic. Many people, many other climate scientists and the public as well want to know how much sea level is rising. But also because we've had a lot of different tools to be able to do this. We've had really four different classes of satellite sensors to look at the changing polar ice sheets. So this is a chart which shows over time, since 1992 to 2012, a 20-year time period, the sea level rise due to losses of ice from Greenland. As just one example. And I'm going to show you estimates based upon satellite gravimetry, satellite radar altimetry, satellite interferometry and satellite laser altimetry. Four different techniques and each of them has their own strength and each of them has their own weakness. So the first assessment that was made was made based upon the first 10 years of measurements from radar altimetry, the oldest class of satellite sensors we've been able to use to look at this problem. And what this shows us that is over the period 1992 to 2000, uh, the ice in Greenland didn't change very much and there wasn't much sea level rise. So there was a, a, an estimated contribution between 0 and 0 0.05 millimetres per year from Greenland, a really small and insignificant amount. And so people were quite pleased to see that result because it meant that the ice sheet was quite stable. But since then, this is now the first assessment of sea level rise from, from satellite measurements. There have been lots of other estimates. So we had another estimate based on the same radar data set but covering just a slightly different time period and you can see the measurements don't even overlap in, 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 in their estimates. And that's because the time periods don't match. And then we had another couple of estimates from laser altimetry and a few more estimates over time. And you can see a pattern emerging here. First of all, there's quite a lot of spread in the different estimates. But also, it seems to be that the case that the rate of sea level rise from Greenland has been changing over time. So more recently, the most recent assessments in 2007 show that Greenland is losing about one millimetre per year of global sea level rise. That's a large number. But importantly, what's happening here is that we're seeing a different class of sensor, the gravity data, the gravimetry data in green, at this end of the time period compared to the early time period. And the concern was that the different techniques were measuring different things. What we've been able to do is combine the measurements from all different techniques to provide a single estimate of the rate of sea level rise from the polar ice sheets and that's a, a step change in our capability. So instead of having these different 40 or so studies published on different techniques, we can wipe them all away and produce a single estimate of the rate of sea level rise from the ice sheet in this example Greenland and how it's changed over time. And we can see it doesn't follow a straight line. Some years the ice sheet is losing half a millimetre per year but a few years later it was actually growing and then it was losing ice and then growing again. And see, we see this gradual progression to a state where in the late 2000s the ice sheet was contributing about one millimetre to sea level rise. This is the final result of combining all of those satellite measurements together. So this is more than 50 years of satellite measurements, concurrent years, from 12 different satellite missions, four different classes of satellite sensors, and it gives us the first sea level trend curves from the polar ice sheets that we can have confidence in. They produce uh, an estimate of sea level rise from Greenland and from Antarctica um, and the combined sea level contribution due to the two ice sheets. And we can see lots of different things in these data. So this is how the sea level has changed over the past 20 or so years uh, due to ice sheet losses. The first thing we can see is that Antarctica, the largest ice sheet by far, is in fact the smallest contribution to sea level rise, 3.7 millimetres since 1992. Greenland, on the other hand, which is a tenth the size of Antarctica, has lost 7.4 millimetres equivalent of ice over the same time period, twice as much. And that's because it's in a, in a warmer location, it's, it's closer to the equator. Altogether, the two ice sheets have contributed about 11 millimetres to global sea level rise, which seems a tiny amount, but remember how much water that equates to compared to the number of people on Earth. But there's also a more interesting signal in here, and that's the way these curves are changing over time. And you can see quite clearly that there is there's an increasing rate of loss from both ice sheets since the 1990s. In the first period of the study, when we used the first classes of satellite measurements, Antarctica and Greenland were contributing about 0.3 millimetres to global sea level rise each year, which is about 10% of the sea level budget. So you would say a minor contribution overall. But in the past five to ten years, that rate of loss has increased. It's now three times as much as it was. The ice sheets are losing close to one millimetre of sea level rise per year. 
that's now 30% of the global sea level trends. So the ice sheets are now becoming, and have become over the past two decades, one of the largest sources of sea level rise. And nothing seems to be changing. And the bigger picture is what people are interested in, and that's the long-term signal of climate change from the polar ice sheets. And you can see quite clearly that that's increasing over time, and that there's no sign that that's going to abate. What's important is whether or not the numerical models which are used to predict future sea level rise can capture these events, and the answer is they cannot. They do not represent these changes. In the background you can see the thinning of ice in Antarctica in red. They don't capture those events, and so we shouldn't have too much confidence in the predictions of sea level rise. You should also, you shouldn't also extrapolate these measurements into the future, but if you did do that, based upon the trends that we've seen over the past 20 years, you get a very different number for the rate of sea level rise. If this were a financial investment, if you're looking at stocks and shares, most people would be pretty confident with 20 years of year-on-year -year growth in that investment that it's something worth putting your money into. And so we should take seriously the prospect that the ice sheets will be contributing more to sea level than one millimetre in the future. <laughs>